Welcome to another wonderful Customer Power BI session at the Microsoft Business Application Summit. My name is Lauren Faber, and I'm super excited to have Diraj from the wonderful company here with us today. Diraj, if you could start us off by telling us a little bit more about who the wonderful company is, what we'll be talking about today, and your role at the company. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Lauren. Uh, so, uh, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, so, let me just give you a quick background about the Wonderful Company. Uh, Wonderful Company is a $4.6 billion uh, company. Uh, uh, it's a privately held uh, company. Uh, the uh, company's mission is uh, to uh, provide high quality, healthy brands and help consumers make better choices every day. Uh, wonderful companies' products you would find in club stores, grocery chains, e-commerce stores, retail outlets. Wonderful company harvests, packages, and sells fruits and nuts, flowers, water, wine, and juice uh, 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 across across the uh, uh, across uh, primarily based out of California. We employ over 10,000 people across the globe. These are one of these are some of the wonderful uh, company brands uh, that you may be familiar with. I'll give you a quick uh, overview of some of the products that you may be familiar with. Uh, uh, Wonderful Company is the world's largest grower of tree nuts. Uh, they are North America's largest citrus grower uh, as well, North America's largest wine nursery, and the largest flower uh, delivery service with uh, uh, Teleflora Network Flowerist uh, are part of Wonderful uh, family of products. Uh, my name is Dira Chajit. Uh, I am IT director at the Wonderful Company. I've been with the wonderful company a little over 12 years now. Uh, in my current role, I'm responsible for data analytics, enterprise technology solutions, and financial reporting and consolidation solutions for various wonderful uh, business units. Uh, my team uh, is responsible in two, two key areas, enterprise software solutions delivery. This includes integrations, uh, building integration solutions across various enterprise applications, custom applications, which involves building custom applications to support features, uh, gaps in existing solutions, and building uh, complete uh, off-the-shelf uh, solutions as well. And then database uh, and uh, systems maintenance. On the data analytics and uh, reporting side, we have we uh, we are responsible for uh, the entire data uh, pipeline, uh, which includes uh, uh, building data models. Uh, building data pipelines that uh, involves transforming data from transactional system, uh, building data analytics and uh, data analytics solutions, which involves delivering reports, dashboards, and applications to fulfill enterprise BI needs. That's perfect. Thank you so much for that introduction. I know that the wonderful company was facing a challenge that's very common to a lot of different organizations, that of trying to find a single source of truth and trying to unify everyone on a, a single platform to be able to have the best reporting possible. Could you dive into that challenge a little bit? Uh, thanks, Lauren. Uh, so uh, within the wonderful company, each group is run independently. Uh, and th that obviously leads to siloed systems and uh, uh, and data as well. Uh, there is lack of single source of truth, some of the uh, notable problems as you can imagine, right? Uh, there are multiple reporting tools that are being used across these uh, uh, different companies. Uh, with all of this, there was a uh, growing uh, frustration and the business users were also looking for a single platform and they also were looking for self-service and ad hoc reporting. So to address these issues, we evaluated various products sometime uh, during last year and prescribed a reporting architecture that addresses Wonderful's uh, VI and data analytics needs. The key focus for the solution was it has to be enterprise class, it has to be scalable and flexible and agile enough to uh, for changing uh, business needs altogether. I'll give you a quick uh, walk through with the reporting architecture that we prescribed and uh, uh, we'll uh, get into the details, right? So uh, key aspects being we wanted to address both transactional and business intelligence reporting. Uh, uh, as you can see here, uh, this the solution ha highlights both real time, which is the transactional reporting and the BI uh, needs. So let me just walk you through uh, from here. Down here, these are the various sources uh, through a host of data pipelines that we built 
We get the data in the data lake that serves the foundation for both real time reporting and also for the data warehouse as well. Uh, data warehouse is hosted in Azure and uh, we use Power BI as the visualization uh, tool. Some of the key highlights, uh, Power BI has uh, provided the lowest total cost of ownership. We are able to address both real-time and analytical reporting. It also is able to cater self-service and IT governance as well. Uh, over the last year or so, we expanded this footprint and we have these various uh, additional sources such as IoT devices, various cloud systems, plant automations have also been added in our reporting architecture and the system has proven uh, that it is flexible and we are able to scale as we uh, as we adopt more. What are some of the use cases for this architecture? <clears throat> Uh, this slide shows what uh, use cases have been delivered uh, through the BI architecture. Uh, for all of these uh, use cases, we have used Power BI as the reporting solution. Uh, uh, notable ones here uh, being the sales, farming, uh, financials, uh, the sales analytics uh, where we get data from Salesforce and so on. Uh, all of this has been delivered uh, at present. This slide explains in detail on uh, what uh, uh, KPIs we have been able to uh, deliver. These are the KPIs that the business had deemed critical for delivery. Uh, some of the notable ones over here uh, are inventory roll forward, uh, where we are able to do snapshot of inventory over period of time and look back and be able to do much more uh, data-driven decisions on future inventory on hands. Similarly, financial analytics and be able to uh, uh, be able to do a drill down to individual data sets at a much more effective pace uh, uh, have been very appreciated by the business. And we will get into a demo very shortly, and that uh, will cover uh, some samples of what we have uh, been able to deliver to the business. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, it's pretty amazing how your solution has been able to scale across multiple different aspects of your company. And I know that the demo you've prepared is pretty extensive and in-depth, so I'd love to jump into that now. Thanks, Lauren. So we'll get into the demo uh, aspect. Uh, uh, just to set the context for the demo, uh, all the data that you see has been uh, randomized and uh, mm -hmm. uh, these numbers have been uh, scrubbed to uh, to quite, uh, qu quite a good extent altogether. So these numbers are just random numbers uh, across the entire demo. Uh, so the first dashboard that I wanted to show over here, and these dashboards are part of uh, uh, applications. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to show you sales analytics first and uh, uh, let me walk you through. So on the sales side, you have uh, in any business, you have uh, two uh, major measures, uh, uh, one being uh, units, units sold, and then the other part being the dollar sold. So on this particular uh, page, you are able to see uh, last four weeks of uh, sales, last 13 weeks of sales, and last 52 weeks, and comparison with prior year uh, uh, as well. You can see it by uh, either the dollar dollar values or by the, uh, the uh, units uh, sold altogether. So if I look at lo loaded amount, that basically shows by unit, and you can actually change the dates uh, uh, to uh, whatever dates you want to uh, compare. Uh, let's say we focus on a certain customer, and we wanted to see more details on how the customer has purchased from the various locations altogether. Then if I wanted to look at individual, uh, uh, individual uh, let's say, uh, uh, region, and I I want to see what they have purchased, I can see that as well. Then I can go into the individual product and I can see what various uh, customers ship to sites or distribution centers have purchased. And you are able to do that analysis uh, by week, uh, by uh, different dates. You can do it with various filters as well. You can do it at an individual sales rep as well. So the business appreciates this and uh, able to use this for making a lot of their business decisions. Moving on, uh, this is uh, this may be a this may have a lot of data over here, but uh, this data serves a certain purpose. So what you see over here is sales quantity and the average price for each uh, 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 each sales altogether. So these are the various varieties that we sell. These are the customers by customers, the sales quantity and the average price for that particular. 
uh, for that particular customer. So now, uh, if I select a certain customer here, this customer changes my sales variety. Down here, I see the pack codes and the various sizes that are available. So I am able to see all of that uh, data changing by the specific customer. As I move across customer, my data changes as well, and I'm able to make more meaningful decision. Now, if I go for a certain customer and I just want to select a certain variety altogether, and then I can actually do further product attribute level analysis just for that particular customer and that product altogether. I can do further analysis for a specific size and now do an analysis across all customers for a certain size. And this applies for every other of uh, every other filter as well. So what uh, what has uh, happened over here is that the individual fields have become selectable filters for other uh, visualizations altogether. And you can obviously change dates and other filters which are available as well. This this particular uh, uh, this particular dashboard shows top 20 customers and how uh, they have purchased. Uh, versus the rest of the customers uh, uh, altogether for a certain time duration. So you can see order counts, uh, KPIs like order counts, sales uh, uh, units, uh, the amounts, uh, the various amounts as well. You can look at them from a visualization perspective, or you can look at it from a table standpoint, and you can obviously export and do uh, uh, drill downs as well. So I can show you how drill downs, drill downs work. So if I'm interested in a certain customer, I can actually select that particular value and do a drill through to sales detail, which will give me the detailed uh, breakup altogether. So moving on from the uh, top 20 customers, we'll, we'll take a look at the ad hoc analysis. So what is ad hoc analysis? This, uh, this feature allows you to uh, look at a specific measure and do a slice and dice by various dimensions. So in this particular case, we have a certain dollar uh, measure over here, and you can now slice it by various customers. So let's say this per, uh, you want to see what are the top customers who made uh, this particular number. Now, I'm looking at, let's say, Kroger, and I want to see what varieties we have sold to Kroger. I can take a look at the various varieties that we have sold. I can then look at a particular variety, and let's say I'm interested in a product attribute, and let's say I want to look at sizes. I can take a look at the various sizes. So this is good. I got my business analysis for Kroger. I want to now do the same analysis for Ahold. So I just move over to Ahold, and the entire decomposition tree also changes accordingly. If I want to look at for other customers, so on. So this is great. Now, if I wanted to just look at my export customers, I can do just select export and look at the export customers altogether. Now, if I want to now move on and basically say, I want to do the analysis on my dollar by customer, uh, by sales reps. So I can look at my sales reps and I can see various sales reps and see their uh, sales. I can do it for a specific day. I can change my time period or I can do further analysis on who are the top customers for a certain uh, sales rep and I can do that analysis further uh, further uh, as well. So this allows you to do uh, uh, a decomposition uh, tree. This is basically a decomposition tree visualization that allows you to do uh, ad hoc analysis and get business answers uh, very quickly uh, uh, altogether. Moving on, uh, this is an example of a report that actually gets data from uh, transactional reporting. This is a live uh, report and uh, this is used for uh, order fulfill uh, like order fulfillment needs uh, just as an example uh, uh, this is getting from a live database and the the data constantly gets refreshed so now from sales analytics we will move to uh, financial side uh, i'll give you an example of what we have done on the financial side so here uh, financials being a lot of numbers driven, uh, we have used uh, matrix qu uh, quite a bit, matrix visualization quite a bit uh, with the financial side. So this is uh, EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Uh, this, you can slice it by individual location, by department, all the uh, values within the chart of account. You can do it at a product level as well. So this current theme stays across the entire uh, financial analytics app. You can look at prior year period to date. You can look at current year period to date. 
you can look at year to date uh, you, you can look at variances uh, against the budgets and you can drill uh, to the lowest level or you can go all the way to the uh, top level. Uh, you can look at individual uh, uh, numbers uh, altogether and you can do a drill through. Now on the drill through, we have uh, we have connected it where you can get at a balance level, which basically gets you data at a much faster at a much faster pace at an aggregated level. Or if you want to do a drill through further uh, at a lower level, you can actually do a drill through and do a subledger level uh, detail, which actually goes to uh, the data warehouse and gets uh, gets the uh, reporting uh, out. Uh, this is uh, compounded annual growth rate. Obviously, these numbers are uh, uh, randomized numbers. So these are truly. Uh, this is not the uh, CAGR for uh, wonderful uh, for wonderful citrus. But you can slice it by various product. I can expand it to uh, include new uh, uh, new data and it changes uh, as well. You can again do uh, further lower level analysis uh, as well. Uh, this is uh, uh, another template for revenue growth. Uh, this is specifically focusing on the revenue side. Uh, as you can see over here, we had specific request on re on revenue and expenses as two separate uh, uh, aspects altogether. And this gives you uh, a quick visual insight into uh, what the various uh, uh, revenue uh, 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 revenue has been over years, or by uh, the various uh, department or the various accounts altogether. And in all of these places, you can actually drill down to the lowest level. Uh, and uh, this is where the columnar database and the uh, Power BI uh, VertiPack engine uh, gives us quite a uh, quite a good speed and agility for the users uh, as compared to how they used to do reporting before. On the expense side, very similar to re revenue here. This is uh, expense. Let's say v Wonderful has their own cafes. So if we look at just specific, <coughs> uh, just specific uh, uh, department, let's say uh, cafe, uh, you can actually see uh, the revenue and the expenses uh, by the, uh, uh, just for that particular department. And you can actually do a drill down, or you can look at period by period comparison and see how this has actually moved. Moving on. Uh, this is ad hoc analysis. This is uh, the this gives an accountant uh, all the data points around what were the opening balances, what was the periodic activity, ending balances, period to date, quarter to date, year to date, uh, actuals and budgets for pretty much the accounting segment. On this particular case, we are looking at balance sheet. Up until now, we were looking at the revenue accounts. Now this is the balance sheet accounts. I can change from balance sheet to income statement with just uh, a different hierarchy. And this basically changes from balance sheet to income statement altogether. So right here, uh, now this is an income statement hierarchy. You can, like we dis uh, discussed before, you can actually do drill down uh, all of these numbers are have uh, they allow you to do a drill down to balance level or subledger level, and this helps them reconcile their month and close activities and so on. This one is a multi-dimensional analysis. This gives the users an Excel-like functionality where they can change the rows and columns. In this particular example, we have the income statement hierarchy that is in the uh, uh, in the rows. And then in the columns, we have locations. Now, if I wanted to do see my income statement hierarchy instead of locations, I want to see it by product. I can change it. And now I see the various products that we sell and the income statement hierarchy by the products. If I wanted to see it at a department level, I can change it to department. And then I would be looking at the various department level income statement hierarchy. So this allows the, uh, uh, the accountants and the CFOs and the controllers uh, uh, of uh, uh, the wonderful company to actually see by various uh, uh, chart of account segments altogether. <clears throat> this is again another income statement ad hoc analysis. We just looked at it before. Uh, this one is maintenance spend. Uh, maintenance, uh, uh, wonderful being uh, uh, in a capital intensive uh, uh, industry. Uh, we do look at maintenance uh, uh, quite significantly. So this one is uh, specifically only the maintenance related accounts, how they have done period to date, prior year period to date, two years ago, three years ago, and compare uh, it by various locations and see at a various plant level. Perfect, thank you so much for that demo, Diraj. You can really tell how much 
thought and strategy went into planning those reports to make them look so clean and have such high performance, even though there is a ton of data that's being funneled into them. And I know with any solution that you develop, you hit challenges along the way. What are some of the lessons that you learned from developing this solution? Uh, so, uh, Lauren, uh, from uh, from a delivery approach perspective, we uh, uh, we were on a time crunch. Uh, management wanted to have a lot of these reports uh, uh, and dashboards done uh, in an aggressive timeline. Uh, we found agile methodology works for data analytics projects. Uh, we identified the KPIs with the business users ahead of time, uh, and the key learnings uh, are. Uh, you work with the key business users. They have to be identified within the within the business uh, unit and the department. Uh, work with the business users on mockups. Uh, that uh, that helps uh, clarify what you want from uh, both from a data model and also from a visualization standpoint. Uh, having a risk mitigation strategy uh, is always uh, helpful. Their data validation is uh, uh, is definitely a challenge uh, with many of uh, data uh, data projects. Uh, as most folks know, uh, the reporting is the, the shiny object, but the key uh, for a lot of the data uh, data analytics projects is around building the data pipeline, having data validation done, uh, having the training and documentation with the users on the data models is very critical. Uh, so focus on documentation. Uh, having a plan for training users at various levels is also critical for uh, a data analytics uh, project. It's amazing to hear how much you accomplished in such a short amount of time, um, talking about that time crunch that you were on. Um, but that last bullet point there where you were talking about planning um, for how to train users, oftentimes getting people to adopt what you've built can be one of the most difficult parts. How did you go about doing that adoption and training those users yeah so we had uh, in, so i will i'll talk about two uh, key drivers here uh, right uh, in uh, and we we worked on multiple projects at the same time right so uh, with uh, with one of our business unit the top down approach where uh, from management they identified kpis and we had those kpis uh, uh, clearly defined by the individual uh, line level managers and uh, and directors uh, that worked on the other side, we also worked with, uh, let's say, folks on the line uh, who had uh, specific reporting needs and work it uh, all the way to the uh, top level management as well. So both the top down or bottoms up uh, uh, approach works quite well. Uh, having a clear goal and purpose that uh, always helps. Uh, like uh, with other projects as well. So in this case, on our on the uh, with uh, Citrus, the management was very clear on what they wanted with respect to KPIs and what kind of reporting they wanted. Uh, so that always helps. Having the alignment between various stakeholders is uh, very critical because you are talking about multiple uh, uh, players here, right? You got a business user, you got a, a C level executive. You have developers who are uh, developing, uh, bringing up specialized skills. You have a UI UX person who just brings the UI UX aspect of it. Uh, so having that clear alignment uh, also helps uh, in getting some of these projects uh, uh, work out uh, at a rapid pace. And as we get, uh, as we were able to deliver multiple sprints uh, one after another on these KPIs in four week uh, uh, turnaround time, uh, we refined, we uh, we adopted some of the learnings from the past, some of the mistakes that we had uh, uh, with respect to data validation, soliciting user feedback early. And uh, as we embarked uh, on some of the later uh, sprints, we worked with users hand in hand on data pipelines and data models and clearly solicited their feedback. Uh, in our case, uh, three well, uh, at this point, from a data analytics standpoint, you have three uh, types of uh, uh, data velocities. One being real-time needs, uh, the, such as the transactional reporting, analytical needs, which are the BI aspect of it, and then the streaming needs, which is uh, where you have streaming data sets like temperature sensors and other data, or website uh, traffic data, so on. So that's the streaming part. Uh, 
so identifying data set ahead of time and working with the users on what uh, uh, what they uh, what they would like to uh, with respect to the data velocity is critical and then having a training plan uh, is critical as well yeah that makes a lot of sense thanks thanks for sharing that um as we're getting to the end here and wrapping up is there any final last thing you'd like to add uh, sure, Lauren. Uh, I'd like to uh, give uh, a big uh, uh, thanks uh, for uh, both Nikhil and Shakti. Nikhil from Microsoft and Shakti uh, Kanan from Island Digital. Uh, Nikhil uh, was uh, we uh, we worked with Nikhil during our evaluation of uh, uh, the various visualization tools, and Shakti has been uh, helping us out on the uh, on uh, building some of the reports and dashboards for a wonderful company. Perfect. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much, Daraj, for being here today and for putting together that amazing demo and being able to showcase that today. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for providing the opportunity to share our journey in transitioning uh, into a modern data-driven organization and happy to have any follow-ups as well, uh, uh, Lauren. It has been my pleasure.